This is the end, my treasured friends. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for The End, the fourth episode of Supernatural Season 5, and this is probably one of my favorite episodes of the season, not only because of the implications that it has, but also the production value. Before we start anything about the actual episode itself, do any of you recognize the main street that they show the end of the world scenes in? The majority of them are. Do you see it? Well, first off, this is the same street where they shot the movie theater slash street scenes for the 300th episode. This is also the Watchmen set. This is a fake street that they used for the Watchmen film all the way back in 2000 and... What does Watchmen say? 2009, 2008 really. This is a set that they made in Burnaby New West and only up until last year had they actually gotten rid of it. This had been used majoritively by Supernatural, but also by a bunch of other productions for a long freaking time. This is such a overused set, but you can hide it so well. It took me forever to realize that this was the same set that has been used multiple times throughout the show's existence. Okay, but now actually going back to the episode itself. I forgot that there is a little bit of a beginning before Dean gets to see the future. Dean arrives at a motel, uh, seeing a guy saying, hey, do you know what God's plan is? And he's like, man, that's way too real right now. He goes up and has a very funny f conversation with Cass, who has two great lines, like, the thing is telling me I'm almost out of minutes, and okay, I'll just wait here. He's awakened from his sleep by a phone call, but it's not Castiel, it's actually Sam telling him about Lucifer's plan. And Dean is still dead set on this whole, we need to be separate. Stronger apart than we are together. Yeah, this is a little bit of corny acting here. This is an episode that's directed by Steve Boyum, who would go on to direct the finale of this season, Swan Songs. Also written by Ben Endlin. And these two make a powerhouse episode because once he gets blasted into the, the supposed future, the production value absolutely rises through the floor in terms of how detailed everything is and showing how devastated the world is but also the intensity and the action and the storytelling in this episode take a giant notch up there's some funny bits but the seriousness as well as the gripping intensity of everything going on just rivets you just keeps you absolutely hooked throughout the entire episode dean finds out that the world has been screwed over by a croatone virus he then meets the current version of himself who has turned into a cold-hearted bastard who is willing to throw away his the lives of his friends and comrades just to get what he believes is the right thing which in the end turns out to be a complete falsehood because he gets his next snap just when he goes off to fight the devil we find out little tidbits about how the world ended but also there's some dated jokes in this there's a sarah palin a president sarah palin joke this episode came out in 2009 y'all thought that the trump jokes we're going to date this show? Yeah, they are, but that Palin joke, holy shit, that's a dated joke. Some people wouldn't even get what that means if they watched the show now. But this whole episode is supposed to be Dean seeing what will happen if he refuses to change his mind, if he refuses to take on the Michael Vessel, if he refuses to do anything else except the supposed plan. We see what happens to other characters. Chuck becomes a kind of a, a hoarder and talks about how toilet paper is gold. This line was a massive meme, obviously during 2020 when everyone was hoarding new toilet paper. Kind of crazy considering some people who didn't even watch Supernatural were sharing this meme. Supernatural just showing its relevance and its wide berth with so many different people with this meme. Castiel is no longer uh, an angel at all. He's full on human and having drugs and sex orgies and everything like that. But I like the scenes between Dean present and Dean future. Not only in terms of the dialogue and seeing the, com uh, the cross comparison between the two characters and obviously the decisions that future Dean has had to make, but also the camera techniques. There's a lot of shots where both of them are on screen at the same time. And particularly the one that I find most impressive with a TV show of this, like this, with its budget, is when they both share a drink. There's two glasses on the on the table, and a trick it 
they have one in front of the other and one takes one and then the second takes the other. That's an impressive camera trick for a show like this. I was really impressed with that. But again, also the cross comparison between the two different Deans, I really enjoyed it while we see that current Dean still has that personality, that Han Solo-esque kind of flavor to him. Future him is a complete stone cold bastard. No sympathy for anything anymore. He just wants to make up for the decision that he made, the mistake that he made which leads in to probably one of my favorite conversations in this entire show is when they go and take on lucifer castiel and all of them get killed and so does future dean gets his next snap and then present dean has a conversation with his brother being controlled by lucifer lucifer has this sympathetic story about how he loved god too much and by not bowing down to humans who would go on to destroy the very world that he calls God's last great creation. It's how he was cast down. It's the reason why he was cast down. Now, the whole idea of whether you believe him or not is not entirely the main purpose of this conversation. It's more so to further build sympathy for the literal embodiment of evil, the literal devil is getting sympathy points with how he is articulating his story the silver tongue devil is playing a yarn that will make you kind of feel maybe he's not so bad maybe he did have it a bit rough i love that whether you agree with it or not it's still a great writing technique for this character how on earth do you take the literal embodiment of evil and make you actually kind of feel a little bit sad for the guy Again, fantastic writing by Endlin, and Jared Padalecki delivers this whole conversation really darn well. And Jensen's reactions with the tears and the raw emotion is so good. And then at the end, when they basically find out that every road's gonna lead here, supposedly, Dean wakes up in the present, still says no to being Michael's vessel, stubborn bastard, but he realizes the main reason why things happened the way they did is because Sam and him stayed separated and he decides to make up for that. And they meet up at that bridge site, which has been used so many times in Supernatural, I'm hopefully gonna go fucking find it soon. And they decide to team up once again. In the end, the end is probably one of the best what if episodes that Supernatural ever did. Not only just in terms of the ramifications of the story, but the production value. Like this has gotta be one of the most expensive episodes they ever made. The prep time for making that town, the, the fake town, into something like that, I think it would have been even more expensive than shutting down Matsky, which they did uh, two episodes ago. But if it wasn't obvious enough, I'm going to give the end a 7 out of 7. This is the first 7 of this season. Took a little bit, took a little longer than I expected, but admittedly I did like through the episodes to see just kind of like, okay, well, what were these episodes? And the whole time I was like, that's probably a 7, that's probably a 7. That's probably a seven. That's definitely a seven. That's definitely a seven. I'm really looking forward to continuing on with season five with you guys because there's gonna be a lot of really great episodes. Season four, as I said with my reviews previous, was a fantastic season, but I really think that this is the best one they ever made. But obviously we'll have to see. But now let's talk about the comments you guys had for this episode. This is already a really long review, so we might as well go through all the comments too. Let's see what you guys have to say. All right, we got a lot here. Fun fact about the end, Eric Kripke used this episode as an inspiration for his next show, Revolution, an underrated show that deserves a bit better. Also the line where Chuck talks about hoarding toilet paper, it's a good laugh considering what happened last year with people actually hoarding, hold, hoarding toilet paper. I didn't actually really get into Revolution too much. I, I gave it a try, but I thought it wasn't, like, didn't really catch my interest, unfortunately. The end is without a doubt, certainly, one of my favorite episodes of all time in Supernatural. Simply the whole alternative future with the two Deans and Samifer in the white suit. Plus, Hippie Castiel was funny. Simply an interesting concept all in all. Yep. Pretty much, you, know, you nailed them down. It's one of the reasons why this episode is so well favored. So about Dean's plan, he's gonna sacrifice all of his friends and just roll in on Lucifer himself with a gun, no backup plan, 
No, uh, nothing. Okay, sure, that will go well. Although, they will try that exact plan a few episodes later. At least they plan on having a backup plan, but still a dumb plan, though. Well, that was the point of this episode, was they teased the idea that they found the cult, and they thought in the future it would still take down Lucifer. So the fact that they never got to use it is that catalyst for why they make it... Um, they think that it's going to work again. Like, it's desperation. Like, how, what do you do, right? Like, I have no other plan except that. The end is my number nine favorite episode in the series. I know what you're thinking. How can an episode with featuring Aftermath the Apocalypse be only number nine? That just goes to show how many great episodes the show has produced. From the beginning, this episode had great atmosphere as Dean wanders through the ruins of the old world. Then the tone becomes a lot more somber when they meet future versions of characters that we all know, all of them broken beyond repair. Up until then, the episode was great, but the last 10 minutes takes a whole, to, whole new level. The conversation between Dean and his now Lucifer-possessed brother is iconic as it is haunting. This is Lucifer at his most menacing and sadistic, as he basically brags about roasting humanity. It's amazing that one episode managed to do the apocalypse just like the biblical lore and not the DC Cinematic Universe. See what happens when you have a budget and talent behind you, Andrew Depp. Oh, by the way, the, this future was real because Chuck was there, solidifying its potential existence. Yeah, I, again, I, I really do love this episode as well. Part of me kind of does kind of curious if it is somewhat of an illusion, um, some kind of twisted narrative, um, because they are capable of doing that, right? But, you know, it's... Uh, it, yeah, you were talking about the last 10 minutes. The last 10 minutes of this episode is definitely my favorite part. The end is a great episode. I really enjoyed seeing a different version of Castiel in this episode, but it was sad as seeing the future version of Dean because to me, he's become his father, a broken, bitter shell of a man who willingly sacrifices Castiel to his death so he can kill Lucifer. Ah, actually, that's a pretty good comparison there. Um, maybe a little bit more bitter because um, John would sacrifice others but he wouldn't sacrifice his brother but yeah no i i see where you're coming from here it's that's a good comparison i've been a bit harsh towards the other alternative universe episodes but it's all because of this beauty the end is epic grandiose stunning poetic the cinematography the dialogue the set designs and the music choices and the acting are all fantastic i struggle to find anything about this episode i dislike it's gritty and dark, but the moments of comedy all work so well. Cass being a promiscuous, orgy-loving stoner is hilarious at first, but after a while it becomes more sad. She made us try on her panties. We kind of liked it. Being the secret that only Dean would know is funny, while also making a lot of sense for his character with all the performative machoism. The interactions between present and future Dean in general were great. What? What? You don't trust yourself? Absolutely not. As the Castiel's hedonism, it becomes less funny and more sad as the entire episode progresses, and you see the ruthlessness, the ruthless and cruel future Dean has become, and how much that scares present Dean. Overall, the writing and the characterization is just really fucking good here. Uh, Lucifer wearing Sam to the prom is beautifully done as well. Oh, the all-white suit is a nice, tu nice touch as it makes him stand out visually from the chaos, dirt, and ruin. The name Lucifer means Morning Star, Lightbringer, so I appreciate that the costume designer went in this direction rather than something dark and edgy. Yep, no, I think the suit really completes that scene. Like you say, he's clean while the whole world around him is completely gone. So no, it's a, it's a great visual use. The end is one of those episodes where you wish the season looked as apocalyptic, but that wouldn't work for so well for a season finale and going into latter seasons. A lot of the genius of the latter seasons was sticking with times in terms of pop culture and technological technology growing. You can totally see the writers took a lot of creative liberties and jabs of what was going on politically in the Ameri in America during this time. Though yes, like I pointed out with the Sarah Palin thing, just some people who watch it now might not have any idea what that joke is about. Given that Chuck gives a throwaway line that everyone relates to in 2022, or 2020, but it was definitely engaging to see what would happen if Sam and Dean didn't reunite with each other like we see at the end of the episode. One thing that also is cool about rewatching this episode is that Lucifer was right about seeing Dan, Sam and Dean 
five years later when The Darkness was released. I know it's not what we they had in mind originally for the show, but it's just a cool tidbit in general. I really love the last two lines on this episode where Dean talks about free will, where they make their own future and Sam still believes in destiny by saying that we didn't have a choice either way. My only gripe with from this episode is where du- future Dean knocks out present Dean is that present Dean goes unharmed by the people infected by Croatoan. Maybe, yeah, it's a little bit of a stretch, but I would say maybe he's only knocked out for like a couple of minutes. Maybe that's the idea, but yeah, no, this is a very, very good episode. I love everyone's comments are really good here. Here are my thoughts about the end. I just love this episode. It's easily one of the best episodes of Supernatural season, uh, season five and Supernatural in general. This episode has a similar presence to so It's a Terrible Life, where Zachariah has to teach Dean a lesson. Dean has to see where his decision to say no to Michael will lead the world. It's also what Sam will actually become if he says yes to Lucifer. All about uh, all about it is a great episode. My ranking for this episode, of course, is 7 out of 7. Well, we agree on that. Despite being an awesome episode, I have a question that has many, mainly to do with Chuck. Why is Chuck still here in the post-apocalyptic world the angels have left? Why would he still care? This kind of makes no sense to me, considering what we learned about him at the end of Season 5. It begs the question for me as if Eric Kripke always intended to make Chuck God in the first place since he introduced him in Season 4. Or maybe the post-apocalyptic world that we see wasn't real and just a part of a scheme with Zachariah and Michael to for- from them to force Dean to say yes. That post-apocalyptic world was a lifelike illusion created by Michael. I mean, we all know how powerful the Archangels are. It would make sense and explain the appearance of Chuck in the post-apocalyptic world because Michael doesn't know about that Chuck is God. Now, two things. Um, Kripke never really confirmed that Chuck was God. Uh, he always kept that kind of ambiguous, especially with how the episode, uh, like the season ends. Also, I, I, I was kind of going back to my point earlier. Yeah, I kind of do wonder if Zachariah kind of gives this like possible future avenue but it's kind of an illusion for the illusion's sake so yeah i i like that idea um it, it's it kind of makes it wonder like is a hundred percent of this true and obviously with what we would see with chuck in later seasons this kind of contradicts that but either way all really great comments guys all right guys thank you so much for your comments next episode is fallen idols so let me know what you guys think about that episode in the comments below and i'll read those off in the next review guys i hope you enjoyed the review if you did leave a like and if you're interested in more subscribe otherwise i'll see you guys next week thanks for watching the video my name is nitz and you might remember me from the animated cult classic tv show undergrads it's been a while but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.